Okay, so by popular demand, <clears throat> we're shooting a video today for, by popular request, there's more than a few guys besides me that, have, that are trying to run a Trimble um, 750 monitor with their APV Cedar. So I'm going to shoot a video explaining what we've done to hook that up and interface them together. This is take one. We'll see how good this goes. You watch the video, and if you've got questions, shoot me comments. We've got our PS300. I'm going to flip the screen. So PS300, <clears throat> APV, electric fan. Um, and this is going to be as real as it gets. You're getting the inside version. Pardon the dirty cab. <clears throat> um, this is our layout. And I've got this a little bit pre-staged here because I'm shooting this solo right now. <clears throat> 5.2 controller with a Trimble CFX 750. Okay. Um, we're running power from the battery up to the controller through the, through the cab. We routed it. I've got my fancy uh, wire hanging. In America, we call this redneck, and uh, it is, but it works for what we're doing with this particular setup. <clears throat> so the power cable is coming in <clears throat> on the 750. This center plug is our power, running, powering the 750. So I got, we built a wiring harness to supply power to the monitor itself and we've got a separate wiring harness that actually plugs into the APV side um, and powers the APV unit from the battery when this is running. And then obviously we've got your cedar cable that runs back to the machine. We've got it all, you know, I just got it run back to the machine. I have the GPSA kit <clears throat> mounted on our custom brackets on top of the cab. So I'm running two GPSs. I'm running the GPSA kit for the APV <clears throat> to control the rate as we're speeding up and slowing down. And then the Trimble monitor <laughs> has its own satellite receiver as well, which is running on this thing. <clears throat> so the question that has been posed is how do we get the APV to create, or how do you create a coverage map on the Trimble with the APV when you're running an APV Cedar 5.2 controller? What we did <clears throat> um, is this. So bear with me a little bit here. Power cable. So port A on the 750. Um, we built a simple two wire pigtail. The pin numbers on this Deutsch connector so we just took a 12-pin Deutsch. I believe it is, it is seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11. So black wire is on 10, red wire is on 11. Get yourself a Deutsch connector, pin it out. So the black wire is on 10, red wire is on 11. That's there. <clears throat> what we did then, and I pre staged this a little bit. So this is our we call it a whisker switch, a.k.a. in the APV price book, the 
upper bar sensor tractor linkage. Um, on my particular whisker switch, these are seven millimeter heads, not seven millimeter. And then you got this little case with this little cover fits on the back side there. That same pigtail, we literally tied into, we just stripped the wires back on the red and black wire and teed them in to the switch. So we're kind of piggybacking on the signal that this is getting from the splitter cable into the 5.2. And you should be able to see, so it should be screw number 21 it's the red wire and if I, 22 21 red wire 22 black wire and we literally just unscrewed those screws enough to wrap the wires in screw them down in there so then what that does I'm going to try and show you. I've got this pre-staged a little bit. Um, that's our basic setup. That's all I did was... Well, let me back up a little bit. So we did our made Deutsch pin. And this little two wires we've got all the way in through this split loom. This is one side of the splitter cable that ties into here so that you can tie in your top link sensor, your whisker switch. And we just ran that red and white black wire, two wire pigtail through the split loom and then back this nut off so you can see we just... We force fit it through the inside. <clears throat> come here. In through where the, all the other wires come in for the whisker switch. And then we just screwed them in, um, pin 21, pin 22. And then we just you know, tighten that nut down and then put it in here. So. Like I said, this is this is the part that's a little bit redneck for what we're doing. If you're on a tractor pulling an implement, obviously you're going to be different. If you're doing something with a skid loader, you actually probably wouldn't be crazy to, to put this in the cab. It's kind of something like, like what we're doing. So just as a point of reference, running a <coughs> Kubota RTV 1100C. I was running on a... RTV 950 before this I just got this cedar sitting in the bed for what some of these projects for this specific cedar it works fine so what I'll do in the cab here oh this is a super raw video <clears throat> um and basically what I do I made my I fabbed up a bracket so literally from the cab, when this is bolted in solid, you know, and I'm not showing you how to do it, I literally just hook the switch with my thumb to turn the cedar on and to turn the cedar off. This is my implement switch. So if you're doing it on an implement, obviously you can mount it on somewhere on the frame or somewhere on the three point so that it engages this on and off. For this particular application, this has worked very well for us. I don't have a three point on this rig, um, so I just manually engage and disengage. So, let's pull this here. All right. So bear with me on the sound. <clears throat> The part that I think everybody else wants to know now.
shadows. <laughs> there we go. Alright. So, let me tighten this up. So, since this is all still loose, it's going to be a little tricky, but you'll get the idea. So this is your basic run screen, right? You set up your job. So we're gonna finish working the field, yes. So if I want to create a new field, if you want to set your AB, set your width, everything else. You want to record a boundary. Um, if you want to set your farm field, client farm field name, all that stuff, you can add as you go. And you go through all of this stuff. I got a new job. I got good satellite signal from the Trimble. So now, so I gotta, if I'm moving, I'm moving, can I engage my signal or my whisker switch? Damn it. I'm painting as we go. If I unhook it, it stops. If I hook it, it starts. So the key to this, making this happen, you go to settings, you go to go back to settings, guidance. Coverage settings, and then you get this one that says coverage logging input. And you've got a choice between active low and active high. And if you build a pigtail with your two wires that ties into your whisker switch and then your port A Deutsch pin connector on the back in 1011. You'll need, I think the pulse signal that you're looking for is gonna be on active low. If I go back to active high, and I go back to my run screen. I don't get a, it doesn't map. Nope. Well, see, so now it's going in the opposite direction. I'm off. So you can, set it how <coughs> for which position which pole position you need it to be get turned around here back in the shade so I go back here now if I go back to settings Guidance, coverage settings, coverage logging input, and I go to active low, and I apply that setting back to my run screen. Ta da! So it takes a click to get it back off. And flip that pole position. Then I'm off, and then I'm on. So if I had, if I had my blower on, my metering roll on, um, as I flip this on, now you're simultaneously turning your metering roll on with your whisker switch, your implement switch, and then you're sending that pulse marking signal to the trimble to make a coverage map um, all, in the same, all at the same time. So this is rolling on 15 minutes here. Um, I know this has been a bit of a long deal and it's a really crude video, but turn this off I will use <clears throat> I've got another tractor that I switched this 
monitor in and out of we run a i got a three-point sprayer on a deer tractor that i spray you know some pasture with this one and a few others um when some of the things that i that that it may give you a hiccup on is when you go if i go this if i go if i take my 750 and i put back in my deer i still i move my my trimble satellite to the deer as well and then i can run my ab line when i'm spraying um for some reason it seems like when you when i go to the back to the deer to my tractor it's on a raven 440 and that raven will only work on i think active high i don't know why there's a it's a different input signal but i can plug into the raven and it and it still works um but then when I pull it back into the Kubota and hook it, hook it back up to my APV, I got to go back in and then change it from my opposite, what it was on the tractor, back into here. The other thing that I have had to do occasionally, it seemed to work here today just fine. But if you if you if you switch the monitor, you go into settings, you go into guidance, you go into coverage settings, and you come into this coverage logging input, and you pick your active low or active high, figure out which one you want to use. There have been a couple times, for whatever reason, I had to close my my job, my existing job. I closed it out, and then I reopened a new job, and it worked. So that is one possible little troubleshooting thing that you might have to do is simply literally create a new job when you apply the setting to get it to take. Um, but outside of that, that's how we did it. That's how we tied into a CFX 750 to an APV interface with the 5.2 controller. Um, I know, I know that the APV has recently made some updates with um, some new software on the 5.2. This is, I'm still running a 2015. It's a 2015 machine. And I haven't had hardly any problems with it. Um, I've obviously changed the belts. They stretch maybe once or twice a season. Um, the only thing I've replaced on this is power cable. And other than that, it's been a great seater. And I've been <coughs> basically from day one when we got this thing back in. I forget when I got it. I don't know. 20. It probably was 16, 16 or 17. This probably was only a year or two old machine when we got it. But um, <coughs> that's what we did. Um, and it's worked, it's worked really good. I've been really happy with it and would like to, if you guys got any other ideas on how to tie in to a deer side or some other monitor, uh, we've got some other monitors that we'd like to put these on too. Um, let me know how you've got it set up. This is what we did with ours and it works, works for us. If you got any other questions, let me know. Give Jody a call, give Grant a call. Uh, give Cameron a call, and we'll do what we can to get you helped out. If you're in Illinois or the Midwest and you need a cedar, call me. We'll get you set up. We'll get you all figured out. Hope this helps, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, guys.